Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am Barbara. I'm so glad that you're here and that you stopped by. Today I'm going to attempt to do a June garden tour of the in-ground space. I say attempt because it looks real bright and sunny behind me and it is <laughs> for this moment. But it has been teetering on the brink of raining all day long. Matter of fact, there's rain in the forecast all week long. And for the most part, it has held on to its promise. Like it has been raining. Um, it's been very hard for me to do anything consistently um, outside. This tour, I feel like I want to do it the first of the month. It is now the middle of the month. So I'm a little behind from when I wanted to do it. Um, just because the weather hasn't been cooperating. So I have my hat on. The sun just came out. It is sprinkling. You can't see it, but I'm not going to let a little sprinkle keep you from seeing this tour. But if it starts pouring down raining, your girl going to have to finish it later, okay? So for those who are brand new to me, I am in zone 7A. I'm in the state of Tennessee. Uh, I would love to know if you're new to me and this is your first time tuning in. I would love for you to say hi in the chat and let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you will um, decide to be a part of my community here. On here, I talk about my journey as a gardener as a new gardener as not i didn't come from a lineage of gardeners i had never gardened before i moved to the country so this is my third summer gardening and i take you on um, from the good the bad the ugly what works well and what doesn't work well and so i'm going to go ahead and give you a disclaimer up front we're going to go into the in-ground space and i'm going to tell you y'all it's not all pretty it's not all pretty but i'm going to show you anyway <laughs> because that's where we are now in the middle of june it's not the way that i want it Things don't look as great as I want them to look, um, but that's part of being a gardener. And if, if I only showed you the good things and the things that were beautiful and flourishing, then that may give someone a false impression. Because when you get in your own garden and the pests come or when things happen, you're like, well, why does mine not look like that? You'll think that you're doing something wrong and you could not be doing anything wrong. It could just be that that's the life of a gardener and that's what happens. So we're going to take you into the in-ground space. If you're new, um, I have an in-ground garden space that's about 4,000 square feet. Um, I have seven rows. They're 100 feet a piece. So we're going to take you and show you what's going on. This is an expansion from last summer's garden. So we doubled the space um, and we're not using utilizing all the space at all. We could get way more in there, but you'll see as we go in. So I'm going to take you in the, in the tunnel, not the tunnel, I'm going to take you to the in-ground space and let you see what's going on. Okay, we're going to start with row one, which is all peppers. You can see here how these peppers look. They're looking good. This is a sugar rush peach. This is a new variety I'm growing. So far, they have done really well. They're supposed to turn like a light orange um, peaches color, but right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think all on that one plant. So they're pretty loaded. And so I'm pleased so far with the results. Pretty low maintenance. So these four, first, first four are all sugar rush, sugar rush peach. And you can see they all have peppers on them. So, so far, so good. We're just waiting for them to turn that color. Then here is a plant that's also new. This is the Edgevarsky pepper. It's a red roasting pepper. So you can see that it's about to turn red, but it hasn't yet. And that's also one there. Okay, so here's another um, Edgevarsky. You can see that it is close to being red there so a little bit more sunshine it'll be red this is a brand new pepper pretty big i must say so that's the Ajvarsky. my first time growing that so so far so good um on that one and i think i have four of these in there you can see man they're pretty big i wasn't expecting them to be that big so then we have i think this is um a jalapeno some of my labels have walked away so I'm having to guess until they get to a certain people. Here's another Ajvarsky. Y'all, look at those. Those are huge. They really are. So, so far, I'm, a, I'm pleased. Here's um, a Shishito. It is loaded. More loaded than I thought. I need to harvest these. More loaded than I thought. More Shishitos there. 
And then this is my favorite Marigold. This is the white Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro Marigold. I did one last year and loved it, so I did a lot of these. So I have Marigolds interspersed in with my plants. Here are bell peppers. Those look good. We're just waiting on them to turn. That's gonna be an orange bell pepper. So those peppers are looking good. Y'all, this tour is surprising me because even on this first row, I have more than I thought. You know, sometimes it's hard to see with the green because it all blends in. Look at that, more peppers. Wow. Y'all, I seriously did not know I had all these peppers on here. Unbelievable. Look at that. So y'all, this is one of the areas I was telling you, it doesn't look pretty. My peppers are laying on the ground. I don't know if I didn't plant them deep enough probably not or they've just gotten heavy but it couldn't be too heavy I gotta stake them up but they're laying on the ground but they still got fruit on them those are jalapenos there these here are habaneros nothing yet but it's growing nicely and then y'all look this is also a new one for me look at that is that not beautiful this is a lilac bell pepper i only bought one i just wanted to see what it would be like so pretty they're pretty small but very pretty they've already turned that's another shishito another shishito y'all remember last year i did so many look at all those i need to harvest I got plenty. Y'all remember last year I said I wasn't going to do as many shishitos? I didn't do as many as last year, but y'all, they just germinated so well that I just didn't want to throw them away. Let's see what this... Oh, this is cayenne. Yep. So we got some on there. They're just not red yet. So more cayenne. More cayenne. These are habaneros. And then the rest of the row is bell peppers and then i usually put flowers at the end of every row so let me give you some beauty you turn around oh that died huh they were pretty i'm not sure what happened there that was not like that the other day okay so my sunflowers are not like that the other day i'm not sure what happened i've never even seen sunflowers do that at least not in my garden so i'm not sure what made that die like that i have no idea it's the first time i've ever seen that happen you guys let me know if you know but they were this pretty vanilla ice. i think they were, these were vanilla ice this is pretty like light yellow color i was gonna show you some beauty but oh well that's the way it goes so i'm gonna turn you around the next row i'm now at the back of the garden gonna walk back up and we'll just do that for each row is the tomato row this is the row that i'm least pleased with um and some of it is definitely my fault because I have not had a chance or my husband has had a chance to put up the trellis. They desperately need to be trellis, desperately. But you can only do so much with the time that you have. Um, and they don't look great. They do look better than they were looking. And then also remember on my soil test, it said I was deficient in nitrogen. I did fertilize with some blood meal um, once. I may do that again, but I think also with the drip irrigation, this particular line was not dripping as well because we had a lot of leaf curl. And when I looked it up, it said that the leaf curl could be um, due to underwatering or uh, overwatering. They definitely weren't being overwatered, but I think they were underwatered. Tomatoes do need a lot of uh, water. I'm sorry, something bit me. Um, they do need a lot of water. So I'm going to show you this row. Keep in mind, don't do as I do do as the books tell you or as i say you should prune and trellis your tomatoes at least trellis some people don't want to prune that's okay that's up to you that's a personal choice but they do need to be trellis otherwise they're going to lay down so let me just show you what the tomatoes are doing okay so that's tomato number one and y'all look <laughs> it's so funny because even without me taking care of them i still have tomatoes i tell y'all seeds want to grow and this is the lord and his mercy do y'all see how wild that is it's all over the place. None of these have been pruned. They look 
wild but yet I still have tomatoes which I didn't know this one is practically laying on the ground oh it needs to be stood up but yet I have tomatoes you can just see I'm just gonna walk down the row they're all pretty much laying down this is just real life of a lot on your plate and you just can't get it all done we will get it done my prayer is that we get it done before <laughs> they die right now some of these don't have tomatoes on them right and it's hard for me to show you like i'm standing that one up you can see yeah Look at my basil. My ba my basil's pretty. The basil is pretty. But this is the rest of the tomato row, y'all. There's a marigold. Now this is where I started to put some sticks in them for this part because they were on the ground. And I did that temporarily until my husband could work on the trellis. But that was, I don't know, a week and a half ago. So they have sticks in them. Some of them have been semi pruned but y'all look I still have a tomato in there look at that still got a tomato and then look here wow I'm pretty sure this is either homage paste or Salvatore select let me see look at those Okay, my um, my tag has somehow faded. So that's either Amish Paste or Salvatore Select. I'm pretty sure it's Salvatore Select, which is a paste tomato. It's one of my favorites. I have tomatoes there and there. Okay, y'all, that tomato row. Ooh, something bit me good. Oh, I told y'all they love me. I didn't spray anything. I know better. But look, the tomato row does not look good. Like, I, I even hate to show you, but y'all, that's real life. We're going to get the, the trellis up. We're going to keep praying over them. And I'm believing God that I'm going to have a good harvest of tomatoes in spite of. <laughs> That's what I'm believing. And I'm going to come back on here and tell y'all about it. Let's go to the third row. The third row is squash, zucchini, and corn. So let's take a look. Overall, squash are looking pretty decent. They're just now starting to fruit a little bit. I do feel like it's going slow. Because usually once I see this, they're ready to go and get big in like, I don't know, three or four days. And they've already been that size for three or four days. So we'll see what happens. But I got plenty of blossoms, as you can see. There. Then this is where we get into the zucchini. And y'all, thank you so much. Y'all thought, <laughs> y'all helped me out. Because on one of my videos, I thought that this plant had powdery, powdery mildew and so many of you jumped in and got me all the way together and let me know that this was a variegated variety i mean a variegated leaf variety and this is when i looked it up it that's exactly what it said this is the dunja you can see i have zucchini coming the zucchini looks good and y'all i like the leaves now that i can see that it's not powder powdery mildew it actually looks good to me it looks very pretty to have the variegated leaves so that's the zucchini they are starting to fruit as you can see so that's good looking good looking good there and then we get into more squash down here you can see that there i feel like it's going slow but we'll see what happens that's more squash and then y'all, this is where we get into the eggplants. Not looking good. Now, they have gotten bigger, but y'all, look at them. And here's the thing, y'all. Let me, let me talk to y'all for a minute. I've gone to a couple other farms, just a couple, two or three, and I've also seen some pictures online. And their eggplant looks like that too, but bigger and producing. 
the leaves to me look bad, like they're rotten, disease or something. Remember, I already had some eggplant that I pulled out that just wasn't doing anything. This is the second round of eggplant. But the thing, y'all, when I started my seedlings, they were beautiful. My eggplant was beautiful until it just kind of went past the time of when it was supposed to be in the ground. And I didn't get them planted soon enough. And then to me, that's when they started to turn. Well, now these are new seedlings that were looking good. And now they look like this again. And these are fairy tale, which is a hybrid, which is new, which is supposed to kind of be resistant to some of this disease or pest pressure. And then it's also, I think, a, it's not a black beauty, but another kind of eggplant, diamond, diamond eggplant. I don't know why they look like this. They have gotten bigger, so they, they grew. At least these did. So I'm like, do I keep them? I don't know. Let me show y'all one more time. Y'all tell me. Okay. Y'all see that? It just don't look healthy to me. Y'all tell me, am I, am I overreacting? And then these here are just small. They're not doing anything. That definitely looks like some pest pressure. So, I don't know. Should we keep them or should we let them go? Well, here is the corn. I have two rows of corn side by side. 10 um, each. Hold on, let's see. So you can see they're side by side because you want to plant corn in, pod is not the right word, pretty much side, like in a, in a block. Um, so, they're, so they can pollinate each other. So they're growing and getting tall. There's no tasseling yet at all, but they look pretty and they've grown up pretty big. So I'm hoping, I didn't do as much as I did last year um, because last year it got out of hand. We had too much, we couldn't keep up with it. So that's why I did a smaller amount this year and I wanted to see if, if I picked it when it was ripe, if I had good corn, if that makes sense. So I don't see any tasseling just yet. So hopefully they're getting pollinated and they will make it. Okay, so that's row three. Down we're on row four. That's the corn at the back of the row. And then as we come up, this is all supposed to be green beans where you see it blank. This again is another area that I wish was better, but it's not. So I've sown the green beans twice, but I think because of the drip irrigation, they have not been getting enough water to germinate. Um, and I don't know what to do about that except to come out here and hand water until I see germination. And I haven't been able to keep up that schedule. Um, at first, the drip irrigation was on for once a day. Now we had it on twice a day when I did the second set and they still did not germinate. Um, I don't know if a bird came to eat them, I don't know. You see, I have one plant that germinated. There's a second one, both of those, nothing. A little bitty one there, nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> And then there's one there. Okay, I'm not overly concerned about the green beans because I have it on my succession plan. So I'm also doing green beans behind my house. And then once I harvest my potatoes in the tunnel, if I wanted to do green beans in one of those bed, in, in that bed, I could do that as well. So I, and then I also have grow bags that I'm sure they can grow just fine in. So I have time and I also have spaces where I can put more green beans. So it's a bummer just because y'all know I like for every space to be filled and I don't like having empty space in my garden, but I don't know. I, I may try it again um, and see if I can get green beans in this row because I do want some out here outside because they did really well last year. Um, we'll try it again. We still got plenty of time, but as of right now, I, I got, I don't know, four or five. That's it. Let me turn you around and see the, so you can see the rest of the row, which is um, okra and... I don't remember what's on the other side of this row. Let's take a look. So look at this, y'all. Isn't that pretty? That's one of my zinnias. So it's pretty. I'm waiting for all my flowers to bloom out here. I need more flowers to bloom. They're out here. They just haven't bloomed yet. So then this is starting to be the okra here. And what I may do is that space where the green beans were, I may plant more okra. Last year I had a lot of okra. It was a bit much. But y'all, somehow, this is a note. 
in this okra patch, I have burgundy okra, and that's not what I what I intended to plant this year. So I know exactly what happened, but I have one, two, three, four burgundy plants, as you can see, and that's not what it's supposed to be at all. Let me turn you around this so you can kind of see. So they're doing okay. Um, they were looking a little rough at first, but they actually are looking a little better now, the okra plants are. And you can see on the burgundy one, I do have some okra forming, but they're not nearly as tall as they were this time last year. So let me tell you what happened with the okra. So I think what happened with the okra is that I saved seed, my seeds from okra. I'm obviously not all of them, but I saved seed last year from my okra plants. And some of the pods, you know, the okra, like after it dried, it fell to the ground. And I just picked up some pods and saved some of the seed not paying attention or not even realizing that last year I did plant burgundy okra, but I also planted Clemson spineless. So when I went out there to save seeds, it was a whole bunch of pods on the ground that had dried. I just picked up some pods and I saved those seeds. It never even occurred to me that some of those would be burgundy, right? So when I went to go start my seeds this year, I pulled from my saved seeds because that's what you do, right? Never thought about it. I'm thinking, why is there burgundy okra in my garden? That had to be what it what it is, is that I saved some seed from the burgundy okra. And that's why I have burgundy okra. What I'm supposed to have out here is Jing Orange and Heavy Hitter and Clemson. I have burgundy, which I didn't intend to. And I'm not sure what else is out here because it didn't my labels are gone. Um yeah, my labels are gone. Look, y'all, I just saw this. I do have one okra form forming. Y'all see that? Yay. And the plant is not that tall. Usually, they're much bigger before they start producing, so that's interesting. I wish I knew what that was. And I said this year I was going to do a better job of labeling, and I thought that I did. But somehow, y'all, my labels are not out here or whatever. And then look at this, right in the middle of the garden. This is not where it's supposed to be, but look at this sunflower. It is not gorgeous that is so gorgeous not where it's supposed to be it's supposed to be at the end of the garden but somehow during the planting party some things got mixed up and that's how i got planted here we're just gonna leave it and let it be um and then that's some i think lemon basil there here let me smell mm, smells so good yeah that's lemon basil and then here are some more peppers small and this is how i know like the plants should be bigger, I think. I'm going to have to go back and look at my June tour from last year. But I think the plants were bigger. But I do have stuff starting to form, which is a good sign. So the rest of this row is peppers. And then I have a basil at the end that's really, really pretty. Next, we're in row five. This is the purple hole pea roll very similar story to the green beans um obviously i did not start them as season transplant them i just direct sowed them and with the water situation they didn't get as they didn't fertilize the first time i did it a second time and i got more so i have some spot as you can see like that one is smaller and then these are bigger then i have another open spot another open spot so it's spotty but I have more than I do on the green beans side there. So you can see some are small, some are big. They will all eventually get big and grow together, but definitely more than on the green bean side. Here's another thing about the purple hole peas. Purple hole peas can be planted six inches apart. Now, because I have this paper from Farmer's Friend um, that was already prefabricated pre with the holes already in there, these holes are 18 inches apart. So when I say not ideal, it's not going to hurt the peas, but I could obviously get more peas in a row if I did not have this particular kind of paper down, right? I know that, I realize that, um, but I wasn't willing to put more holes in it and mess up my little neat design. I was not. But I'm thinking about putting some peas maybe somewhere else um, where I can grow them closer together. I'm still thinking on that. Um, 
the purple hole peas was a big hit for my family last year like i have one bag left from last summer so it it literally lasted us the whole year which is fantastic and last year i had half of a 100 foot row no probably 25 foot of the row but they were placed like six inches apart versus these are 18 inches apart and i have half of the it's probably a 50 foot row so um i still may need some more peas we'll see how that shakes out the rest of this row is tomatoes and the reason being is because <clears throat> i knew that i would need a trellis for the peas and so if my husband was already putting up a trellis um i wanted to make sure the tomatoes were on the same row because he's gonna automatically have to put up two trellises one for the whole tomato row and then one for this row with the, with the um purple hole pea so my extra tomatoes i made sure that were on this row now these look a little bit better in terms of they haven't gotten as big where they're falling over so to speak we have some yellow flowers but no tomatoes yet they're smaller most of them are as you can see some of these are falling over yep some of these are falling over so they need to be trellised as well they're just not as big yet as the other ones but that whole row is tomatoes and you can see that i do have some tomatoes already being produced as you can see now this is row six this is just flowers you can see that that one's laying down i didn't do that one deep enough those are some flowers there so basically this half of the row is, is flowers gonna be like a pollinator patch per se and then going up this way are more peppers so this is the second row of peppers you can see that this one is like laying down like he needs a nap um he just needs to be stood up i told y'all i'm showing y'all the good the bad and the ugly that's a jalapeno that's a jalapeno that's bell pepper bell pepper there more bell peppers there so we have something on just about every plant again they seem small or whatever and not completely full out again i think they definitely probably need some more nitrogen i would imagine if you know let me know there's some thai basil that really that's really pretty that's a habanero more habaneros oh i see i have one for me no, 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 this is not a habanero. This is sweet bonnet, if I'm not mistaken. Sweet bonnet, but you see how it looks a little yellowish? That's a nitrogen deficiency. So, you can see there, I have some yellowing for sure there. So, we gotta definitely get some more nitrogen. So let's talk about, again, how do I know I have a nitrogen deficiency? It's because I did a soil test and that's what came back. It's the first time I've had a nitrogen deficiency. Um, and if you didn't see my soil test results, I'll try to pop it up here. I did a video about soil test results, how to interpret them, where you can get it done and what to do about it. So for the nitrogen, it recommended blood meal, cottonseed meal, feather meal, things like that. So I attempted to put down blood meal what I really want is something that is liquid that I can put in my back, backpack sprayer and spray it. That would be ideal in terms of a liquid nitrogen source. I have yet to find one. If you know one, let me know. An organic liquid nitrogen. Now, they said that the blood meal is water sol soluble. I put blood meal in my watering can and added water. It came out, but it was not. Maybe I need to take something and actually mix it, mix it. I shook it but it wasn't completely mixed. So to me, it didn't work as well. And I don't feel like the plants got the full strength of it. But y'all know with this big space, coming out here with a watering can, that'll take me forever. So I really need something. And I didn't try it in my backpack spray because when I tried it in the watering can and it did not come out fully, I did not want to clog up my backpack sprayer and then not be able to use it because that's way more expensive than the watering can. So let me know. I would love some suggestions on what you've done if you have found an organic liquid nitrogen source or if you have used blood meal and water and you got it to dissolve all the way and that worked or what else you've done now obviously i can come in here and push the soil back and add blood meal to the soil 
that's a lot of that's a lot of holes y'all it's a lot of holes and to try to get dig up the soil while the plant is still in there and get under the surface like you want to get to the top two to three inches of the soil that's going to be difficult not impossible but difficult but this is another reason why I should have gotten my soil test before I planted because if so then I could have really broadcast blood meal cottonseed meal feather meal whatever before I put the plants down but I didn't do that so learn from my lesson right learn from my lesson so let me show you the very last row which is the watermelons I want to show you let me just pan so you can see that's the tunnel over there that's the garden we just walked these six rows each row is about three feet apart. Now, if you're doing market style gardening, obviously you're gonna look at this and say, girl, you are wasting space, right? Because true market gardening, they have 18 inch walkways. I have double that amount, right? But I like, I'm not doing market style gardening and I like the space. Maybe one day that I will if I get really serious about selling a lot of food. But y'all, it took me everything in my power just to get this planted, <laughs> okay? Um, and then you can see that we have space over there where the grass is. We could probably put one, maybe even two more rows over there. And then we have this space here. That's what makes up the 4,000 square feet. So you can see we even have stuff on the sides that we're not utilizing. So what I want to show you is this space here is this open space. This is black paper that doesn't have any holes because we didn't intend to plant in this space and we're not going to plant in this space this year. I did this so that the watermelons and the cantaloupe would have space to roam because last year they were at the edge of the garden, like around here, and they kept getting trampled on and, and all that good stuff. So we left this big of a space um, so that they would have space to roam. So that's why you see this open space here. So these are the watermelon and cantaloupe. There's nothing on this row except watermelon and cantaloupe. And then I have interplanted it with um, basil. The reason why I did that is because, again, these holes are 18 inches apart. I wanted my watermelon three feet apart in the row. So that means I had to skip a space. So in the open space, weeds were growing. So I went ahead and just put um, basil there because I had basil left over to um, take up the space just so that weeds wouldn't grow. So overall, they're looking good. I see that that one... I don't know, has something going on there. This is the cantaloupe. You can see the leaves, maybe some pest damage. I'm not really sure. This one look, is looking good. That one's looking good. But overall, this row is looking good with the watermelons. Some are starting to flower. They're already starting to spread. Like it's already taking over that hole that's empty which is fine and I'm fine with the holes as long as it doesn't have a weed like this is a weed uh, pick that up like this is a weed because nothing's planted here but that's really all I have to pull up is where something is not planted but overall you can see where I don't have stuff planted a weed is growing but that's the beauty of the black paper. If I have something planted there, I don't have to worry about weeds. You can see this whole space here. You don't see any weeds at all. So I got to come in here and weed this. But you can see that these are doing quite well. The rest of the row is empty. It's going to be filled with more watermelons. I have them in the tunnel. I've already started the seeds. They just got to be planted. So there is the whole space. Okay, so that's the tour of the garden mid-June. We'll do another tour next month and I am hoping and praying for more progress. Hopefully my tomatoes are still not laying on the ground. Um, they're up, but y'all, this is this is all a part of it this is my garden in real life right this is my garden i don't do this full time this is a hobby that i thoroughly enjoy um but i run a business i am a minister's wife so we have a ministry i have two children and i'm a wife that's just a little bit right and so you may even do this full time and yours still may look like this here's the point is that am i growing food I am. Is it pretty? Mm-mm. It's not. 
but I'm still growing food. And do y'all see that even with, and I hate to use the word neglect because that's a strong word, but even with me not trellising yet, not pruning yet, not necessarily weeding all the time, there is still food. Seeds want to grow. And so this is a part of it. That's all I'm going to say. And so I want you to be encouraged. I'm always... Not only do I want to just share what's going on, I want to be a source of inspiration and a source of encouragement because I have to eat my own words, right? There's times when I'm like, this is, I don't even want to show this, but I got to show it. I'm called to show it. I must show it because this is real life. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you at the end of this harvest season, we won't be talking about Barbara didn't prune her trellis and her tomatoes. We're going to have big baskets in our hands and we're going to have abundance and we're going to have food and we're going to have food that we didn't have, right? I promise you at the end of the season, it will be that. I believe it with all my heart. And I want you to believe it with all your heart. So if you started some seeds and they died, start some more, right? If your plant is all laid on the ground like mine, stand it up, right? If your leaves are dead brown, pick them off. Keep going. Whatever you do, just be encouraged. Keep going because you're going to be further, better off than had you not grown, had you not done it right? So thank you guys so much for joining me today on the tour of the in-ground space. I appreciate every comment, every like, every subscribe, and I really do believe that we are building the community. Like the, y'all, on the zucchini that I thought had powdery mildew, when I saw that I didn't, I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not ashamed. Like, I'm not too proud. I was not like, oh my god, they probably think I'm stupid. No, I was like, I'm so glad y'all told me. I looked it up, and I was like, Y'all, I had no clue because I've only gone, grown zucchini. I grew it my first summer. I didn't grow it last summer. And I want to say I, I did Black Beauty, which does not have variegated leaves. I've done three or four different kinds of squash. They've never had variegated leaves. I've done a winter squash, like a butternut, never any variegated leaves. So I didn't even know that there was a squash variety that had variegated leaves. I did not know. And so I'm so thankful that one of y'all told, not only one of y'all told me, a lot of y'all told me. So I'm thankful and that's what it's all about. And that's what I want you to do. If there's something that you see that I don't, that I ask a question and you have the answer, put the answer down below because you're helping me and everybody else in the community, right? It's, it's, it's my channel because my face is on it, but it's really our channel, right? I don't do it to hear myself talk. I do it to share my journey in the hopes of helping somebody else want to grow food because that's what it's all about. So y'all, this is my gardener's journey. This is all part of it. I invite you. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.